Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at people who like to walk around in short sleeves in the middle of the winter. Now, what we're actually going to be looking at is the uh, GPS 530, uh, it's a little Garmin device that makes uh, navigation pretty easy if uh, you know how to operate it. and actually can do quite a bit of things you probably did not realize. So what I'm going to do first is, uh, since it is a pretty cold day here, so let's go ahead and get some electrical power kind of flown around this thing and I'll go ahead and crank us over real quick. Set that over to starting position. Uh, we're going to go make sure our magnetos are set to both. However, that well, looks pretty good to me. Give it a little blast, hit those avionics, and now we're good to go. Since we're going to be sitting on the ground for a while, I'm going to go ahead and lean out that mixture nice and long. So these two units are pretty classic. Like I said, it's a 430 and it's a 530. I've got experience with these in the real world as well as in the sim. They're not bad. Uh, they're really, they're really, really not bad. Uh, the first thing they have to do, of course, is they have to run through their little startup procedure and everything like that. And once it does that, it tells you kind of all your different databases. We're just going to press the enter key. Uh, enter is your way of kind of going next. Uh, one really fun trick, by the way, is you see this thing that says set fuel, fuel. We can actually go here. We can actually select this. So if I actually were to pop up my tablet real quickly here, let's go to our aircraft page. We're going to go back. Uh, we can go to flight performance. We can actually go to mass and balance. If we go to fuel, let's say I fill this thing up to maximum real quick and it load an aircraft. I can actually come here and press enter on that. And uh, that basically will set your full fuel, which is kind of neat. Um, of course, this doesn't do anything anything because uh, unfortunately the way they programmed it is they don't let you go up here and actually hit these options uh, which is kind of a pain because the real one you could actually use it to estimate your ranges and stuff like that but it's just kind of a bummer so when you first fire this up uh, you're going to get this nice little indication here that's going to let you know that it has no idea where it is uh, that's fine it's basically looking for satellites but after a few moments you'll start to see individual little GPS satellites appearing which will kind of let you know where they are and uh, slowly as the GPS satellites appear and thing I find very interesting is the fact that why is this GPS doing a better job grabbing satellites than that GPS? It's like, my guy, why? Why? And you'll notice we've just about completed RAIM here, and now we've actually got a position on one of the two GPSs, and boop, it'll bring you to the main display screen, which kind of lets you see everything. Now, this is a pretty modern unit. It does complain, or to complain, it has that too. And it contains a nice little moving map, which is going to give you a good idea of everything in your surroundings, as well as the ability to basically select flight plans and things like that. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, how to change the radio channel, because uh, believe it or not, that is something you have to watch out for in this one. You'll notice up here, this is the word COM, and it gives us uh, two different displays. In this case, it's the same. If we want to adjust this, we have a knob here for this. This big guy is going to be for the big numbers. This little guy is for the little numbers. Now, if we wanted to switch over to VOR, we have to come over here and right click with our mouse to switch it. Now, for example, if I wanted to go to Hartford VOR, I could do this. Now, if I actually want to activate the frequency, remember active is always going to be white, I have to actually push the button next to it like that. And you can see it'll actually identify it. It'll even tell me how far away it is. Now, if I want to go back to communications, I can right click that once more, come in here and dial anything I want. So if I want to do a 12160, for example, and to switch it, you can see I'm now on 12160. Not bad. Next thing we're going to show you is the concept of changing pages. On the bottom piece here, you'll notice we have a navigation thing. This is nav, and you have these little boxes here. This represents what page you're currently on. You'll notice we've got the same thing down here on the 430. Now, for example, if I grab the little knob here and I crank on it, it will change which one of the navigation pages I'm on. If I come down here, you'll notice it does exactly the same thing. As a matter of fact, I actually recommend leaving on this one. I find this to be the easiest combination for me. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to go grab the big knob and watch this you'll notice it changes the big things. It basically gives us brand new pages of functionality. So if I were to go over to here to Waypoint, for example, I can now use the little knob to jump between the different Waypoint channels, or I could go to Ox, I could go to Full Planning, all that other good stuff that they don't feature. We even have a little nearest page in here, and all that works exactly the same way on both devices. Now, one of the things that's really wild about this is let's say I come down here to Waypoint, and I wanna come down here and I'll take a look at maybe some frequencies. Now I can either dial these frequencies in by hand if I wanted to, or if I want to be lazy, you can come to this thing that says push cursor, right click on it, and that actually gives you the ability to bounce around. So I can come over here to Unicom, for example, and I can actually press the enter key, and you'll see that it takes this frequency and it rams it right into the standby frequency there. Now if I want to get rid of this flashy goodness, I can just right click on this again and shut that off. Keep in mind that put it on COM2, it didn't put it on COM1. If we wanted to actually set that to COM1, we'd have to do the same thing up here. Again, we could come here like that. Again, I'll show you the big screen. I'll go ahead and pull it, and it works exactly the same way. So if I wanted to put departure, I'm going to just press Enter. You can see it loads that frequency up for me, and I can right-click again. 
Now there's other pages in here too. For example, if we go to aux, there's a whole thing here that gives me trip planning, density altitude, I can come in here and press enter. And it'll actually attempt to calculate some things E6B style, which is pretty wild, especially since it sinks some 34,000 feet up. <laughs> kind of an interesting problem to have, but I'm not gonna worry about it too, too much. Again, the classic thing here, if I just right click, it'll take me right out of there just like that. There's a lot of cool features in here too that they don't have enabled. If you get stuck and you can't change the page, just right click on it again and it should give you the ability to do it again. One of the cool things here is you'll notice this is units position page. Some people like to go in there and tweak this to make it make more sense for you. And again, if you need to, you can come to nautical. If for some reason I wanted to do statute, I could do that. If we wanted to do metric with kilometers and KPH, that's where this is located in the event that you actually want to kick that. If you go, oh no, get me out of here, just press the clear button and it'll take you back a page just like that. Like for me, I'm much more of a gallons pound kind of a guy, but again, because of the way it works, it won't do that. One of the cool things too here is you can actually come down and if I'm done with this page, you can hit that clear and it's gonna take you back here, which I think is kind of cool. And again, I can press that right click to kind of take me back to pages mode, just to make your life a little bit easier for that particular purpose. Oh, we have SPAS on this thing, cool. Yeah, don't worry about any of this stuff. This basically allows you to improve the quality of your positioning. I don't even know why they give you a choice of this, but eh, I'm not complaining. All right, so we're all set with the aux stuff. Let's actually do some navigation here. So what I'm gonna do now is make my way over to my lovely navigation page. And again, I can come over here and you can see this is my default setup for this particular unit. So what I like to do is a couple different ways. There's sort of like the speed version and then there's the more complicated, I actually have a place to go and how to get there sort of version. If you're looking for the speed version, just press this D and simply tile in where you want to. Now I'm gonna press this little keyboard icon real quickly here and depending on my mouse position, ah, my mouse is not in the right position. That's okay, I'm not worried about it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the big knob to simply pick the next letter and you can dial in exactly where you wanna go. So again, little knob for letters, big knob for positions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dial in where I like to go. As usual, go down to Hartford, keep it nice and simple. And that looks good to me. When you're satisfied with where you wanna go, you just come over here and you press the enter key once. It'll say, are you sure? And you just press enter. And now you'll see all my gauges and needles all spun around. And if I actually were to zoom out real quickly here, you can see very clearly that I now have a little flight plan that's gonna be taking me from my current position here all the way down to that position there. Now, if that doesn't work for you, um, you can actually add in more details to your flight plan. To do that, we're gonna come down to the FIPL page here, flight plan, press that button, and now we can actually get a little more sophisticated. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press menu. And if you go through this, you can actually come down here and you can actually delete things and add things and remove things. But since we're in direct mode, there really is nothing that we need to do. So I'm just gonna press clear to go back. And so what I'm gonna do is grab the push cursor, I'm gonna right click on it, and you can see we can now dial in the waypoints themselves. So let's say we wanted to take our first waypoint and we want to go to a Westover, for example. I could come K, uh, whoop, be careful. <laughs> Welcome to the world's uh, fuzziest mouse here. Let's go to EF. This mouse, believe it or not, is from 2004 and it still lives. All right, there we go, KC, ooh, KSIG. That could be fun. I'll press enter. Now you can see we've picked our first waypoint as KSF. Let's say we wanna put our next one and we'll go back to, uh, we'll shoot an approach here. We'll still go down to Bradley as well. I'm convenient where I live that most of the airports near me have relatively low letters in the alphabet, making my life a little bit easier. JKL, just like that, I'll press enter, enter. And you can see we have a pretty good flight plan. So I can come up here just like that. It's looking pretty cool. Now, one of the things I love is there's nothing telling us how to get from where we are to Westover. So if you actually highlight it, like you see here, if I press the direct button, it says, does this what you want to do? I say, yeah, boop. And you can see everything goes burp, 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 and moves over. And now we actually have selected that particular waypoint. So if I'm done with my flight plan here, I can actually press the FIPL button again. And you can see I've got this lovely little magenta line of safety that's gonna take me right to Westover. Now that's pretty easy stuff. Again, we haven't done anything too complicated. One thing I haven't taken a look at is what our RPM is. Oh, we are idling a little low there. Let's give it a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry, engine. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, so one of the things we can do now too is we can actually pick our approach into Bradley while we're still sitting here on the ground. Let's say I'm doing a practice approach or something. To do that, I'm gonna press the proc button and it's gonna say, what would you like to do? Uh, would select approach, obviously. So I'll press select approach. It gives me some choices. Okay, obviously this is into Westover. See the trap? So I'm gonna go press clear. I'll press clear again, press clear one more time. The reason it is doing that is because it is the currently active waypoint that we're traveling to. Now, if I go to the FIPL button here, pull my press cursor out and then scroll down to Bradley and I go ahead and press my menu. This gives me the ability to go ahead and tweak this. So if I select approach now, you'll see it doesn't care and it goes right back to Westover a second time. This is part of the fun and the things you have to be very, very cautious of when you're using airports as waypoints. Again, if this were like, you know, a VOR or something, CEF VOR, it would not be giving you the shenanigan. So just be mindful of that when you are playing your actual things. Now, one of the cool things you can do in the flight plan page too, 
is I can right click like this, go to where it says Bradley, press menu, and I can actually activate this leg of my flight. So if I press activate, it's like, are you sure you wanna do this? I can press enter and you'll see everything swings over. And if I zoom way, way out, I don't think we'll be able to see it. You can actually see way, way over here that that flight plan part is the one that is currently activated. Now I know what you're thinking. Ta-da! You now are able to actually go in here and select the approach that you desire. So that's pretty cool stuff. That's pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and close that back out, go back to my flight pan page. And again, at any time I could right click, go back to Westover by, so, ooh, careful. Remember, you can always press clear if you accidentally. So go up to Westover, press enter, press enter, enter, boop, boop. And you can see we've switched back to Westover as our desired waypoint. Again, we'll go ahead and shut the cursor off, press the fipple page, and that's gonna take us back to this. So let's go ahead and get this thing in the air. Uh, let's see, what could be a fun way to get this thing in the air? Ooh, I've got an idea. Let's do something we're not supposed to do with an airplane. <laughs> gonna do something naughty. Gonna do it naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Actually, that's the wrong direction. I'm pretty sure that's Massachusetts that way. Or, I'm sorry, New Hampshire. Uh, uh, oh, there we go. So I was saying, whoa! Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Terrain, don't panic. There we go. That is one way to get airborne in a hurry. I like that. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to kind of swing us over this way and I'll kind of get us on course. So give us a little bit more power. I feel very, very sorry for this airplane. Uh, that was very, very rude of me to just, um, you know, like the hand of God grab this thing and obviously get me in a position myself a couple blasts of victory trim so we can get over these incredibly tall mountains and now we can take a look at some of the other features of the gps i actually like the autopilot on this thing i find it very easy to use i know it's very very old school but like i don't know it's just easy arm that looks good to me we'll take a look at the different modes everything's engaged everything's good and yeah, we probably should turn on our transponder too just to let other people know that we're in the air now and we're not just goofing around so one of the things you have to be mindful of other than the fact there's a giant mountain right there is uh, the fact that this particular unit here uh, will feed information to the automatic pilot of the aircraft that you're operating, depending on what aircraft and the designer and all that other good stuff. But the cool thing is there's a button in the bottom left corner here that basically allows you to select which mode it's on. Right now it's sending GPS information to the autopilot. If I wanted this to be a VOR, I could come over here and I could press the CDI key to switch over to the VOR mode. Uh, that works pretty well. Like I said, uh, not, not too much challenge as far as that operation goes, depending on what you're trying to achieve. But one of the things I will do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab this and I'm going to come swing us over to the side. I love the fact that uh, we have a, clearly a uh, GPS failure here. <laughs> the entire unit is uh, not reading correctly, but that's okay. It won't be the first time I've ever had to go to war with an HSI that wasn't behaving. There we go. That is now the correct position. Cool. So now, of course, we can take this and we can give it a nice little gentle push to the side. We'll give it switch heading mode and we'll take a nice gentle right there. Hey, there it is. And now once we get there, we can switch back to uh, basically heading. Oop, heading. There it goes. That's what I wanted to do. Delightful. And now everything is behaving once again. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the different view options that you have on these uh, nice little pair of GPS here. So if I come up to the menu option, uh, one of the things you can do is you can turn weather on, which I think is a wild thing that you can do here. Um, we don't need weather today. If we did, we could go up there. But one of the cool things is if you go to the thing that says change fields, if you press enter on that, you can actually change what these numbers tell you at the top. Uh, one very popular thing that uh, my wife likes when I fly is uh, when you come down to this ETE, you can actually change this to ETA. Now, if you press enter, it'll actually tell you what time you're going to get there as opposed to how long it's going to take to get there. Uh, one of the things that's nice about this is I can tell you at about 1555, which is about four o'clock, is about the time that I'm going to get to that particular destination, which is pretty cool. Now, if I want to, of course, I can come up here. Like I said, it's all sorts of goofy things, depending on what you want to do. Ground speed, track error, all that good stuff, estimated time on route. I'll switch it back there. For those of you who are curious, when you're done, you can just go ahead and press the clear button that takes you back to that default now. Now, other things you can do which are really, really helpful on this is you can actually limit the amount of information that you see on the screen at a time. Now, for example, if I were to come over here and I press the clear button once, you'll notice this little minus one has appeared right here. It is basically removing detail from the screen. Now, if I press it a couple more times, I'll do minus three. You can see the only thing visible is your flight plan. You can see a little minus three to remind you that you're massively uh, basically removed detail. If I press that one more time, you can see that flips it back on and now we get everything, including things like VORs and stuff like that. Depending on the type of information, we also get airspaces, which is incredibly useful for us, depending on what it is we're trying to do. I'm just kind of looking out the window here. Once in a while, I should probably operate the airplane. That's probably a safe bet, <laughs> especially given the fact that, um, you know, it is uh, definitely some pretty tall mountains where we're flying around right now. So other things you can do too, for example, if I go to my nav page and I switch to this, you get the north up view, which is for, 
I don't know why people choose this view, but um, for those of you who use traditional sectional charts, this is actually a very helpful view. We can go, of course, to this view, which is very handy too for traffic. We can also go through if we had, um, again, we have no traffic of this particular kind because our ADS is off, even though our ADS is on. I'm not gonna stress about it. And of course, if we wanted to see exactly how good our navigational quality is, we could pop that one up too. Nice thing about this view is it'll let you know if there's any tall mountains. This is a terrain mode right now. This is the middle option. We did clear all the terrain. Otherwise, we'd see a bunch of angry red basically appearing all around the screen to let us know that we're being naughty sort of thing with the airplane. Swing over here. And again, you come back to that mode menu. We have everything that's good on this piece. You can actually turn on the data fields here so you get that north up view with the junk all around the side. But I find that that's not particularly critical. So let's go ahead and fast forward to our approach. All right. Let's go ahead and get ourselves set up. So whenever you're doing anything with an approach, especially with this particular aircraft, it's really important that you get all kind of your little details squared away before you get too close to where you're actually going to be approaching here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get our aircraft descending uh, nice and smoothly here. I'm not doing anything too crazy there. I like how the normal one, you could hit arm and it would basically start taking you down. For this one, what you basically got to do is kind of point it the way you want it, and then you can start making it do its altitude thing. Ah, eh, they just make it fun for you. You know how it goes, kind of a thing. There's your vertical speed. We'll get a nice 800 feet per minute. Altitude's good. We're going to go slap it on arm mode and uh, down we go yeah down down uh, i'll do about 800 i think that'll be plenty delightful cool so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to fly this thing into a nice neat approach because uh, it's such a handy device for that particular purpose i like the little green arc to sort of give you a heads up where you're going to be coming down so what i'm going to do is you can see we're already on suspend mode we've got msg it's approaching VNA profile ah it's good stuff press my proc button select approach uh, we're going to be doing 24 today so i'm just going to come down here you can see we have rnav y for 24 press enter it's going to say do you want vectors do you want kibby give me some kibby and what I'm going to do is you can see a nice little diagram of this thing. And obviously, this is uh, definitely the wrong key. So I'm going to press the approach, push that button. We're going to go make our way down to ILS uh, RNAV for 24. Press Enter. Back to Kibby. Whoa, careful with the mouse. Careful with the mouse. Enter. Whoops, I did it again. Third time is the charm, everyone. So we'll make our way down here. Last time. This time, definitely. Gentle. Gentle. Big knob. There we go. There it is. Delightful. And now you can see it's uh, pre-programmed everything on this screen to basically getting us uh, ready to rock. If you're happy with that, I can swing back to default now. If I can zoom out a little bit and you can see that it's basically setting itself up and it will automatically fly uh, whatever particular hold that you need for a particular flight. Now this is getting kind of crowded up here. So what I like to do is hit clear a bunch of times to basically reduce it to just the actual approach that I'm attempting to fly rather than trying to get all sorts of frustrated trying to see all the individual details. Now, because this one does require a hold, uh, one of the cool things that we can do here is we can actually go to the flight plan and see this hold. You can actually right click, come down to where the hold is and delete the hold. So if I press enter, the hold is gone. So now if I press flight plan, you'll notice we're proceeding direct Kibby with no hold. Now, any sharp instrument pilot would immediately point out the fact that you can't do that. Uh, we'd have to do a procedure turn to line ourselves up with the actual ground here before we do it. Uh, don't worry about that. And now that we're a little bit closer to the ground, uh, I've gone ahead and armed the approach by pressing the approach button. You can see LPV has popped up. That is awesome. That is uh, the magical maximum accuracy GPS approach that we can basically manage here. Uh, this will give us all sorts of useful things. This isn't LNAV plus G or anything like that. This is the legit. And you can see that that's all ready to go. And we're sequencing our waypoints directly as we're starting our actual approach. You can see we're just about to our final approach fix here. And uh, just like predicted, you can see that we are receiving LPV. So we are getting ourselves some vertical navigation information. You can see our little glide slope line coming down like that automatically. Of course, since we're in a 172, we do have to slow down at some point so we can actually start making the approach. But that just shows you how quickly and easily you can actually design and actually fly these particular floats lights just like that so without now again i haven't really looked at the windows itself we did a little kind of yeet into the sky there but everything's working smoothly of course if we were actually going to land this thing what we would do is we go ahead and now pop down our one notch of flaps to help make it a little bit easier to make that last minute transition and you can see the ground is about two and a half minutes away and uh, it's just like that so as you can see, the uh, GPS, the GNS there is a very, very good unit. It might be an old school unit, but it works absolutely fantastically well. Programming, it is really a snap. It's really just getting a handle on the uh, way that the knob works and having to push the button with the right click instead of the left click. Once you kind of get past that, it's not too bad. Uh, approaches, obviously you saw that fun little trap there. If uh, you don't have an end, like if you're using airports as waypoints, it's gonna give you some issues. And of course you can see at the end there, once we arm the approach and selected everything automatically, it basically flies itself. Enjoy.